Hello and welcome back, it's puzzle time with Sudoku Sleuth and today we're playing Rising Tide. Now I'm not entirely certain if I'm honest that I've captured it in here. You know on the left hand side you can see what is clearly a bit of a seawall under attack from rising sea levels. But you know the way that this picture is depicted it almost looks more like you know the parting of the Red Sea and Sleuth somehow is Moses stuck in the middle as opposed to the rising tide image that I had in mind. But that's the closest I was able to come up with. Um, now, just a um, couple of things before we get into today's puzzle. Um, I personally found the music a bit too loud in yesterday's video, so I'm hopefully at the right level now, and it's subtle enough that it's occasionally okay when it's a little bit quiet, but um, uh, not sort of replacing and almost fighting for you being able to actually follow what I'm actually doing in terms of the solution. And today's puzzle is something that I'm really looking forward to. So it's another in the series from James Sinclair. And if you haven't actually subscribed to his, um, I think his weekly issue of, you know, handcrafted uh, Sudoku variants, you really should be. I mean, if nothing else, the first three are free. You're welcome to subscribe to those. And, you know, there's another set as well that's available if you are a paying member. But nothing wrong with at least getting free access to three very well-crafted um, Sudoku puzzles, one of which I am actually intending to feature today. Now, if you've watched some of my recent solves, you've probably noticed a bit of a pattern where I am obsessing with rotational symmetry. And when I took a look at today's puzzle, I thought, surely this is rotationally symmetrical, and therefore I'm actually going to read up again about that rotational um, symmetry theorem and see if we can actually use it as part of the solve. Now, one possibility here is we'll be entirely disappointed it, is not, it isn't rotationally symmetrical. So it's almost like one of the things that I'm trying to do here is spot it, use it, and hopefully showcase how you could do the same as well. Right, long intro, let's take a look at today's puzzle. Um, have I actually prepared it? I don't think I've actually even set the rules correctly. So um, you may see the rules look like, yes, yes, they do, yesterday's puzzles. Apologies for that. Rather than re-record the intro, what I'm going to do is edit it live. Never a good idea. But um, think of it almost like a, a practice run for some of the live um, recordings that I've done in the past. Not live recordings. Some of the live streams that I've done in the past where I've had to do this a little bit on the fly and actually solve some of the puzzles on the fly as well. Right, here's today's puzzle, Rising Tide by James Sinclair. Fairly straightforward set of rules. First one, normal Sudoku rules apply. Place the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Then we have killer cages. So cages show their sums and digits cannot repeat within a cage. I only see three cages, such as these three cells highlighted even in green, not just with a dashed line. Sum up to 15, 23, and down here a seven. So, for example, if this is a 2, these two cells will have to add up to a 5 for it to be a 7 cage, for example. Lastly, we have thermometers. So, on thermometers, digits increase from the bulb end. That's the bulb end. You've got to essentially imagine that this is a physical thermometer. And just like in physical thermometers, numbers get bigger as you get away from the bulb. So, if that was a 2, this would have to be 3 or higher. Let's go with four. That could be a five. What I can't do now is add a three in here and essentially go back down um, the list. Um, that's essentially a smaller digit that breaks the puzzle. So um, apologies. Um, I'm actually having a few issues once again with my screen. So I don't actually know what that recording looks like, um, whether even the video has suddenly snapped to a much smaller setting and then it's going to sort of snap back. Um, so I guess I'll take a look at this post and at least I'm back. Right, so can't go down below a three and uh, as in essentially that has to be an increasing digit. The fact that I put a three here and it's four and five lower breaks the thermometer rule. That's all the rules that we have for today. And um, really, as part of the solve, I will get onto rotational symmetry. So this will be a slightly longer solve than it should be. But I'm hoping it will show off a new technique that I really do wish to use um, 
live when I'm actually taking a look at a puzzle. Only thing left to say is, uh, if you're up for battling the rising tide, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but you look at this and you think, yeah, 4 out of 10 difficulty rating feels right up my alley. Link will be in the description down below as usual for you to play along. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. Now, the reason I thought about rotational symmetry, I hope that's fairly kind of self-explanatory, is everything about this puzzle so far is rotationally symmetrical other than the thermometers. You know, the bulb ends are not rotationally symmetrical, but the lines certainly are. And um, they look essentially rotationally symmetrical. And I say rotationally symmetrical, just imagine that the grid is centered around, you know, row five, column five. I guess it isn't hard to imagine. And everything in here, if you just twist it 180 degrees, you'll end up basically back to where you were. But not with the same digits because the 23 seems to map dangerously close onto the 7. And they're actually two forced cages, and this is probably where we can start. 7 in 3 cells can only ever be 1, 2, and 4. 23 in 3 cells can only ever be 6, 8, and 9. Um, easy way to think about it is the minimum, if it's 6, would be 1, 2, and 3. And the maximum, if it's uh, 24, would be 7, 8, and 9. When you're only one away from the maximum or minimum, there is no real degree of freedom here. Um, you actually are forced to take the maximum digit, in this case, the three, and add one. The minimum digit, in this case, the seven, and take away one. Um, what I'm going to do is start with solving... And when I do seem to observe that it is rotationally symmetrical, I will explain the theorem then rather than start it now. So let's just take a look at these humongously long thermometers. This is a minimum of one. Clearly, this can't be a two. Two is not available in here. This is a minimum of three. This is a minimum of five. One, two, and four, and it has to be bigger than three. That's five, six, seven, eight, and nine. This is actually forced. At least up to the three because this could be one or two clearly the five six seven eight and nine are forced the three is actually forced because remember four is not available in box seven so everything beyond this point has to be that minimum slash maximum that i've actually showed you and i'm almost betting that the same will be true here so let's think about what this could be this is clearly no longer a nine it's in the box this is a minimum of sorry a maximum of eight 7, 6 is not available because 6, 8, and 9 are gone. So that would be 5. That can be 4. That could be 3. That could be 2. And this would be 1. And that is, in fact, what we have to go with. Yeah, this is all forced. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no, 7, and 8. Uh, these are not 8. Uh, this is a 6, 9 pair. This is an 8. I'm guessing, yep, that's one, that's two, these are not two, that is a two. And what I'm going to just quickly check is for how many digits are they actually mapping correctly. So one and nine, two and eight, three and seven, which is looking pretty good, four and six, five and five. Right. Rotational symmetry theorem. <laughs> so essentially, if you spot any Sudoku, that's the theorem, any Sudoku this would apply for, where the digits map uniquely onto another number. So the 1 and 9 pair up here, it happens to be that in this case they're actually adding up to 10 the pairs, but that's not even required necessarily. The fact that the 1 and 9 are mapping onto each other, the 2 and 8 are mapping on each other, and of course that applies vice versa. The 3 and 7 are mapping onto one another. The 5 is consistently onto a 5. The 4 and 6, the 7 and 3, and you can see the 8 and 2 here is not breaking. That means that once you've mapped one set, everything else has to map in the grid. So what I'm going to do today is going to almost deliberately try and ignore one set of digits. So essentially just focus on 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and almost blindly apply the same logic for 9, 8, 7, and 6 and see how we get on. Right, 
twos. Um, I can see it's forced in here. You can see this is one, two, three, four. This is a minimum of four. It's not even a four or a five. This is at least a six. But anyway, take a look at twos. This has to be a two. Just Sudoku plus the thermometer here, excluding the two. That's a two. That's a two with essentially just uh, this Sudoku logic and that two. Then we'll just blindly follow it. That's got to be an eight as a result. Um, that's got to be an eight over here. And that's these were all the twos that I had placed. See if we can actually do any more. No twos, no twos, twos in one of two cells. You know, too many options there. Can I place twos in here? Yeah, I can. So you can see again, one, two, three, four. This is a minimum of three or four. Two can't be there. Two are in neither of these locations because of these two. So two is forced into this row. Two now between here is forced into one of these two cells. This two eliminates one of these. That's a two. We can just about finish up with twos in here and then just apply that rotational symmetry. So eight, eight. Um, sorry about this. My dogs are a little bit nervous because Mrs. Sleuth is uh, on a different floor. And uh, I've lost video once again, so I'm just going to have to Pause for a second until it comes back, and here it is back again. Right, uh, did I do anything else with the twos? I think I did. These twos, I've done these twos, I haven't. That means one of these is eights, and that's done. Right, I think that's all I can do with twos right now. I've got sort of like a, is that called a Y-wing? Or like a modified X-wing? And I've got the same thing going on with the ace in here. So we'll move on from that. Threes, can I do anything clever with threes? Not sure. Yeah, not a lot of threes on the grid. Sorry, I've lost video again. This is going to get quite frustrating. Right, minimum this can be now. Can this even be a three? Because none of these can be a two. So one and two, this can't be a three. So three, there's none of these cells. There's still three options though. I'm not sure this is worthwhile pencil marking. Maybe fours? I guess maybe thermometers. Let's do that. Not one. Not two. This could be a minimum of three. This can be a four. That's a minimum of four. That's a minimum of five. That's a minimum of six. Now, I can take it up to seven or nine. I can make this six or seven, but not eight and obviously not nine because I still have one more to go. This can be, can't be five, but it could be six because I can go up to seven in here. And this can't be four, but could be five. So that's not entirely useful. But it's actually very restricted if you think about it in the context of rotational symmetry. So what is this? These feel very restricted. I can have a one. I can't have a two. I could have a three. I could have a four. And I can have a five. I can't have a six or eight, or nine. So the largest this can be is a seven. The four or six in here, um, this could go up to, it can't be a six, it can't be a five. This is actually forced. It's the minimum and the maximum because it can't be five, it can't be six, and it clearly can't be seven because that can't be eight or nine. So this is four, four. That's now forced because it can't be a two because of this two, that's a three. And this is also forced, and that will force a few options for us. Rotational symmetry would give us now a 9, a 7, a 6, and this is 3 or 5, depending on whether this is 5 or 7. That 4 helps, that's a 1, that's a 4, therefore this is a 9, this is a 6. 
Um, have I got any more here that can help? I haven't really thought about the 15. I mean, it'd be very tempting to think this is 4, 5, 6, but not really proven. Because, you know, another option is actually literally 2 and 8 with a 5 in the middle. That would also work. So, to be proven still. And has this helped me with my 3? So, what have I actually done? Once, this is now a 1, 8 pair. Therefore, this is a 2, 9 pair. Have I done anything else with 1s? Not really. 1 is in 1 of 2 cells. 9 is in 1 of 2 cells. Two. I don't think I'm any wiser on the two. Three's not wiser at all. This is forced to be a three. This is forced to be a seven. Fours. That's a one four pair now. One four pair gives me um, a six nine pair here. Remember the two is now restricted, that's an 8, that's a 7, that's a 3, that 2 gives me a 9, a 2, and therefore a 1, an 8. Um, can I keep this going? 1, 4 in here means I need a 9 and 5 and 9. Okay, and therefore 1 and 5, also okay. We have 5, 7, can I place anything in here? I need... 5, 6, and 7. That's clearly not 5 or 6. That's a 7, 3. That's a 5, 5, 5 again, 3. Excuse me, what did I misplace? 6, sorry. And then 4. We know what this digit is. It's taking me a while to spot it. 6, 4, then we have something 9 and 7. That 9 gives us an order. That's 9. That's 7. That's 1. That's 3. That's 7. That's 3. Let's see if we can keep this going. We need... What do we need in here? We need 4 and 9. No, 4 and 7. That 7 gives me an order. That's 7. That's 4. This is therefore 3 and 6. And we have 1, 2, 3. We need 4, 5 and 9 here. That's not a 9, that's not a 4. Not 9. Not 0, definitely. Not 4. And therefore 6, 5 and 1. And again, not 1. And not 6. Have I resolved any of these? Doesn't look like it. So I guess at some point, sorry, lost the screen once again. Uh, not sure how much time I've lost to that. Let's see if we can uh, finish this now before it disappears one more time. So I still have tons of options in here. Did I click on anything that's causing it to select funny? Okay. Um... I really shouldn't be thinking about the 15. I should just do simple Sudoku first and see where things take me from here. So, for example, I have 1, 4, and 5. I clearly need... Oh, we don't have an 8. That's right. 2, 5, therefore, to add 15. Uh, and therefore, 1, 9, 5, 5, 6, 9, 4, and 1, and I'm guessing this will basically bring us home. That's not 5, that's not 5. And what can I actually place in here? So if I ignore 1, 4, 5, 6, and 9, let's just think about 3, for example. I should be able to sort of sort that out. So that's a 3, that's a 7. Um, 2 and 8 I can do. No, it's done. 3 and 7. This is 1, 4 or 5. It's not 4 or 5. It is a 1, 9, 5, 6, 1, 5, 9, 4. Just all of this, just rotation, 
we need four and six left that six tells me that's a four and six for the finish so it's a it's a lovely puzzle mr sinclair it's an excellent way of showing off rotational symmetry and how it can be used so i'm kind of glad that i actually used it um and made a purpose of actually explicitly looking for that theorem and testing for it so hope that you guys enjoyed the puzzle i don't know about the video i think there were just too many technical challenges here but um hopefully my magic of editing will actually make it somewhat watchable uh, see you back for the next video bye bye for now Thank you.